two ordinances. One is a pictorial ordinance, that is a picture that we are showing, and then one is a remembrance. The Great Commission to take the gospel to all the world, baptizing them and teaching them. Baptism shows his burial and his resurrection. That's just what we just pictured. The Lord's Supper pictures his broken body and his shed blood. And I want to emphasize to you we use the word shed because there was no spilling to it. If I bump a glass, it spills water on the table. But Jesus did not spill his blood. He shed his blood. Purposeful act. So that's our ordinances, isn't it? We picture his burial and his resurrection. You know that we are among the only religious system in this world that actually believes that Jesus rose from the dead the third day. That he's not in the grave. So what a blessing to be able to picture that this morning. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter number 30. The book of Deuteronomy is Moses' final words. Words of encouragement that he would offer the children of Israel. I have down here for verse 15 to 20, but I'm going to read verse 15 and 16 and because we'll come back to this later. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 and 16. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whether soever, uh, whether thou goest to possess it. Father, we're thankful for this time, thankful for the day, thankful for the privilege that is ours to be in your house. We ask your blessing, we ask for clarity of thought and open hearts that we might receive the principles of your word. And Lord, we are so grateful for Josiah's testimony this morning, and we ask that you will bless his life. Watch over us and forgive us, for Christ's sake I pray, amen. Choices. How many of you took a little time this morning to decide what you were going to wear this morning? Okay. A college professor, I've told you before, a college professor decided that trying to pick out what to wear was a waste of time. So he bought seven suits all the same, shirts the same, ties the same, socks the same. And so he would just go down the line in the course of the day because he felt like trying to decide what you're going to wear is a waste of time. Well, a good way to prevent that is is to narrow your choices. <laughs> narrow your choices. But nonetheless, we decide, we make choices every day. Where are you going to have lunch? Some of you We'll leave church today and we'll try to discuss where you're heading for lunch. And if you decide to go to Culver's, I know there's a group that goes there that you need to be very careful of. They get a little rowdy once in a while. But choices. Once in a while. I will tell, I will ask uh, Miss Anita, I say, do you feel adventurous today? And she goes, that depends. Because that means that I'm thinking about going to some place we haven't been before. And sometimes it's a shock to the system. And uh, sometimes our choice uh, we wish we had a chance to make it over, take it a different choice or a different way. But choices, nonetheless, life is a series 
of choices. Dear ones, even in the service of God, life is a series of choices. In our reading, he, he tells them that there is uh, good and death and evil. Jesus wrote about Matthew chapter 7 concerning the broad path and the narrow path. Which one led to life? The narrow path. The broad path is well traveled. Many people are on it. I've heard some interesting comments once in a while. But it, discern, it concerns me when people make light of hell. That is no place anyone would want to go or choose to go. The narrow way leads to life. The broad path leads to destruction. And we can even apply that to Christian folk as we will notice here in a little while. Joshua, in Joshua 24, verse 15, he said, Choose you this day who you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. My brethren, it's time for men to be men and to be the spiritual leaders of their house. It's not someone else's choice whether or not we serve the Lord. It is our choice. If you are the head of your house, the responsibility of serving the Lord rests upon you and your guidance and your direction, not someone else's. Do we not want to have a house that for our children feel safe? That we feel safe? That our wives feel safe? Where does that fall? Upon whom does that rest? Choice. Matthew chapter 4, Jesus goes into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And in his attempt to challenge who Jesus was, his, de his deity, offering him material things, bread to eat, all the kingdoms of the world, and even his own life. And yet Jesus, his response to all of that was, Thus saith the Lord. You know, that's our response, should be. Thus saith the Lord. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by, the, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's right, isn't it? Okay? But Jesus wanted to show his people, his disciples, and those who would write later, he too had choices to make. And he made the right ones. Which is encouraging to you and I because we know that we can make the right ones too. If he did, we can. Jesus preaches a hard sermon. You ever sat under a hard sermon? Some people think, well, sometimes I preach hard sermons. Well, I know preachers that, you know, I know of a preacher that has me beat hands down. His name is the Apostle Paul. He would lay into them, wouldn't he? But he preached a hard sermon and then a bunch of people turned and walked away. Jesus responded to his disciples, Do you want to leave also? Okay? Do you want to go? I don't know of too many pastors that would be willing to say that to lose half their congregation. Do you want to go too? And Peter responded in verse 66, To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Why do we go to church, dear ones? It's not because of the ambiance. It's not because of the people. It should be because our desire to worship the Almighty. Amen. He is the central uh, person in every, in every worship service. I know that there are churches today that they try to make people feel good, have nice programs, 
and then tell the pastor you got 10 minutes? As I've told you before, don't ever tell me I've got 10 minutes. And expect people to dine on meager spiritual food. You know, I like ice cream as good as anybody else, but I don't want to live on it. Okay? Bless your heart. Well, I, most of all, I need a good steak. Amen? Amen? Bring me a good steak cooked just right. Mr. Tyler here knows how to cook steak and chicken. Okay? And... I realize that there are those who kind of turn their, uh, their heads a little bit about ham, but I like a good ham sandwich too. Okay? I'm a good Gentile. <laughs> but I want some meat once in a while. Okay? I want to be fed something. And listen, if I'm going to hear the truth, it's not going to be pleasant sometimes. But the truth is the truth. It is sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even dividing of soul and spirit, joint and marrow. And we need that. He said, To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life in our shore. If you're going to find eternal life, if you're going to find everlasting life, if you're going to find the pathway to heaven, it's going to be through Jesus Christ and no one else. I know a lot of folk they attend church. Well, I go to church. Well, that's good. That's a good start anyway. Okay? Let me advise you, worship begins when you get out of bed on Sunday morning. Of praising the Lord. Praying His blessing on our services. It begins when you get up in the morning and it continues when you walk through the door. And then when the songs are sung and the Word of God is opened, we should be in the position of hearing spiritual things and be blessed by them. I'll tell you this real quickly. Our kids were little. We're getting ready for church. I thought I would be, I'd be a good dad and I'd get the girls ready for church and let her get herself ready. I was never so beat in all my life. I was exhausted. I thought, my goodness, is this how she feels every Sunday morning? I had just gone through rummaging the entire house looking for a shoe. Never did find it. Looking for a shoe. Something about that big. I mean, my lands. Getting frustrated, getting aggravated all the time. Tell me that you were not, have not been in that position before. And then you have to get the kids in the car and they say, let's go to church so we can worship the Lord. Do you see how easy it is for us to suddenly turn and when we do get to church, our minds are, our hearts are not in position for true worship. That's right. So you have to be careful. Well, what do I do to fix that situation? I tie the shoes together. Okay? If I've got one, I've got them both. That way they don't have to come to church with one shoe of, and one shoe and of different kinds on each foot. You know, that way it kind of doesn't look very good that way. But you know what I'm saying? Worship. We are here to worship the Almighty. Let's go back to, to Deuteronomy chapter 30 again and look down to verse uh, number 15. He says, I have set before you the way of life and good and death and evil. Does it seem like to you that we're living in a world where evil seems to be having its day? <coughs> Remember Isaiah 5 and verse 11 that they'll say what is good is evil and what is evil is good? 
We're living in a time when people want to do what they want to do without accountability. They want to live a life as they want to live it. Okay? And yet, my dear ones, they expect the Lord to bless them. It doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. And you know why? Because there's consequences, isn't there? There's consequences. Sometimes we go to do something and or go out to eat somewhere and man, these buffets are evil. Aren't they? Now for you skinny folk, I don't want to talk to you, but <laughs> you know, you're sitting there, you're about as full as full can get and you look over and there's another piece of pie sitting over there calling your name. Well, there's consequences, isn't there? Alright? Now, the rich man, fine, fine linen and purple and fed sumptuously every day. You know, parties back in the Bible days, they would last up to two, maybe three months long. Now, I like company as good as anybody else, but two or three months long, that's a, that's a bit excessive to me. And they would eat and drink until they made themselves sick. Literally sick. Then they would go out of the house and over there in a little area over there, there was a structure known as the vomitorium. That structure was there because they would eat so much they'd get sick and then they would throw up. Then they go back inside the house and do it all over again. Does that make sense, anybody? Okay. Well, there's consequences, isn't there? There's always been consequences. The rich man had all that life could offer him, and he had this beggar at his gate asking for crumbs. But who came out? Who came out ahead in the end? Was it not the man? With the crumbs, he went to Abraham's bosom. He is comforted while thou art tormented. Okay? Now I'm going to take time. Let's keep your finger here in Deuteronomy 30. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. When a farmer goes into the field, his intent is to plant as much as possible. We've got stuff coming up now. Soybeans, and they alternate corn and soybeans. Corn takes the nutrients out of the ground. Soybeans puts it back in. And they will cover. Uh, my dad used to, i go around the outside and he would give me this, which means I need to do it again. By then, I'm dodging limbs. Uh, one year, we had the cicadas. And I tell you, it was an experience driving out, going underneath one of those trees and having them things drop all over you. Hundreds of them just dropping all over me. And I said, they're bugs. They won't hurt you. And I'd go underneath there and I'd shake them off. <laughs> but one more time, because he wanted to get as much in the field as possible. Well, here in 2 Corinthians 9, verse number 6, But this I say, he who soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he who soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. It makes sense, doesn't it? If you're going to plant a little bit, you're going to get a little bit. If you're going to plant a lot, you're going to get a lot. Well, in the Lord's work, if you sow sparingly, then you're going to reap sparingly. Okay? In verse 7, let every, uh, every man according as a purpose in his heart, so let him give. Not grudging in necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So if I give, has not the Lord promised to provide what I need? 
And that's what it is. That's how it works. Here in Galatians chapter 6, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you plant green beans, you're not going to get corn. Okay? What is sown is what you will reap. I think it's a dangerous precedent when God's people try to sow both. They try to live a life in the world and try to live a life that shows that God is in their life. And that, my beloved, is called a double-minded man. And James said he is unstable in all his ways. Instability. So what is Moses trying to tell him? He says, choose life. That makes sense, doesn't it? Choose life. Okay? In choosing life, you will find peace. You will find the Lord's presence. In developing a love affair with Jesus, you will find the closeness and intimacy that you need with Him and know that He is with you no matter where you go. And the easy part, right? Obey His voice. Isn't that the easy part? Okay? Obey His voice. When a shepherd would go to out and go out and in the valley there would be several, several flocks, several shepherds around, and one shepherd would call out, and his sheep would begin to come out from amidst all of those flocks because the sheep knew his voice. And he was the one that would lead them to food and water and look after them and even protect them from the enemy and the wolves. But they knew his voice. Do you know the Lord knows our voice? Do you know that we need to know his voice? Okay? And not be confused by what we are seeing or hearing around us. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen? Amen. Cleave unto him. That means stay close to him. The sheep that stayed close to the shepherd were protected. If they wandered away, they were in great harm. There was a man that left Jerusalem on his way to Jericho and fell among thieves. Well, the reason that is is because he was traveling alone. He just didn't do that back in the Bible days because there was danger of robbers. Well, that's exactly what happened to him, wasn't it? Fell among thieves, and those thieves beat him, took his clothing, and left him there to die. The religious came along and saw him, and what did they do? They went around the other side. They stayed away from him. An official of the temple came and saw him and went around the other side. Then Jesus said, a Samaritan, an unwanted individual as far as the Hebrews were concerned, he came up, he saw him, he gave him medicine, put him on his own beast and took him to an inn and promised to pay his bill when he got well. Now who was a brother to the man who fell among thieves? Well, of course, he that rendered aid. Okay. Well, they didn't appreciate that very much because so many in their religious piety, you know, you don't mingle with certain individuals. And I agree, we don't have to condone what people do. Are we instructed to love them anyway? Okay. Cleave to him because it will give you a length of days. Paul wrote in the Corinthians, uh, for, in the uh, Excuse me, Paul wrote in t- to Timothy telling him about our parents. If we will listen to our parents, it will lengthen our days. Did you listen to your parents? I started listening to my parents about when I turned 25. I thought they were a little bit out of touch with reality. And I come to find out that they knew a lot more than what I realized, especially when I had children. All right? Length of days. And they're going into a land that is saturated with idolatry. 
various gods of every size, short uh, size and kind, and they would worship in front of these things. Some of them even required human sacrifice. Okay? And he wanted them to understand you're going into a strange land, a dangerous land, and if you don't watch yourself, you'll be drawn in to some of that idolatry. Were they not drawn in to some of that idolatry? Okay? Because they lost their vision of the presence of God. So I think the question this morning is, what will you choose? We all make choices. What would you choose? There was one time that we were buying a car and I had Miss Anita next to me and they all were the same price and I said, which one do you want? Pick one. That's only happened once in the times I bought cars. <laughs> you know, pick one. So she stood there and looking at Adam, you know. And I said, well, just pick one. We can't have two. But she got to pick. You know, there are people who pick cars for their color. You know, it has to be a certain color. We had a neighbor one time that used to dye her hair to match the color of her car. Thank goodness it wasn't purple or something. But anyway, she chose the vehicle by the way it looked. Okay? <laughs> one of mine was going to do that. She was, did that very thing. Dad, I like this one. I said, why do you like it? She said, I like the color. Well, the color's not going to get you down the street. You know, you have to check things inside. Well, I'm sure it's fine. I like the color. Because color's important, you know. Well, dear ones, we all make choices. Those choices, many of them will be with us the rest of our lives. Okay? Bless her heart. When she said I do, she didn't realize she'd be stuck with me for the rest of her life. But nonetheless, choices. You know, being a pastor's wife is not a walk in the park. It takes a special lady to be a pastor's wife. All right? I could not do what I do if I wouldn't for my uh, live-in secretary. <laughs> no. She is a tremendous help to me. Choose. What are you going to choose? When you leave here, you will choose to do something. Go home for dinner. Go out to eat. You choose. Well, the most important choice a person can make is whether or not they'll ask Jesus into their heart. Everything else pales in comparison because in the path of Christ there is life and not death. In the path of Christ there is heaven and not hell. In the path of Christ there is joy and not grief. We have to choose these things in order to receive them. Because choices matter. Well, you know that Moses was not allowed to enter the promised land. He had violated a picture that God wanted Israel to know. So he was allowed to see, but he was not allowed to go in. He was 120 years old when he died, and he was still in good health. But God said, you will not enter. You will not go in. So the mantle of responsibility fell to Joshua. Yeshua, which means deliverer. And he would take them across the Jordan River into the land that God promised. It would not be without opposition. It would not be without problems. But God would so bless Israel that they would possess the land and the enemy could not stop them. You know, when God's people are united behind the banner of the cross, they are unstoppable. So a decision 
If you are not born again, if you've never trusted Christ as your personal Savior, I plead with you to consider His love for you. In fact, He died on the cross. He shed His blood. And He stands at the right hand of the Father ready to hear your prayer of forgiveness. If you are saved and desire to a closer walk, you're welcome to come. You can talk to me if you wish, or you can bow in prayer. It's just uh, whatever your spiritual need is, we desire so much to be of help. Let's stand together, please. <clears throat> and what is our number? 521. 521. May I have three verses, please? <clears throat> 